Thanks, Scott. Thank you so much. We're so excited about this. We've heard overwhelming demand from our customer base. They want Azure. They want the security. They want the compliance. And they want the scalability of Azure. And they've been asking for a long time about this. And at Databricks, we really focus on building a platform that's really easy to use, that's really fast, and it especially focuses on collaboration to make data scientists, data engineers, analysts collaborate and be more productive together. So we're super excited to join forces here and build this first party service together. Uh, we think it can be a game changer. It's a natively integrated, optimized service. And we think that it can really make big data and AI much, much more simpler. I could talk all day about this, but I want you to actually see the demo live by Greg Owen. So thank you so much. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Scott and Ali. Hi there, everybody. My name is Greg Owen, and I'm a software engineer at Databricks. So, so far today, we've heard a lot about how developers at Smart Hotels 360 can build and deploy their different apps on Azure. What I'd like to talk to you about is how they can also build and deploy their data pipeline, which will allow them to optimize their most important metric of revenue, their hotel room occupancy rate. And we're going to do this today using Microsoft Azure Databricks, the fastest, easiest, and most collaborative Apache Spark platform for Azure, the most compliant and trusted cloud. Let's dive right in. Here you can see that I'm in the Azure portal, and I have access to this shiny new Azure Databricks service, where in just a few clicks and filling out a few fields, I can launch a new Azure Databricks workspace. This will allow me to have a fully functioning Apache Spark cluster up and running in as little as two minutes, so I can very quickly dive into my data. It'll also pass through all of my information and configuration from Azure Active Directory, meaning I don't have to waste any time reconfiguring all of my security settings. It just works right there. But I've already got an Azure Databricks workspace set up, so let's dive right in here. Here's the workspace, and I'm going to open up our file browser so that we can see all the different steps in the pipeline that we're going to build for you in the next five minutes. But before we dive into the pipeline itself, let's take a step back and, like any good developer, think about what the end goal of this pipeline is. Right, so the hotels industry pulls in about $500 billion in revenue each year, and it is a fiercely competitive industry. For a successful hotel, room occupancy rates might be anywhere between the mid 70% to the high 70%, but for an unsuccessful hotel, they can be as low as 60%. It's a pretty tight range, and so even increasing our occupancy rate by just a little bit can drive a massive amount of revenue and make our business much more successful. So we're going to build a pipeline today that will increase that revenue, increase that occupancy rate by providing offers of experiences that we can provide to our potential customers to entice them to come and stay at our hotel rather than our competitors. We're going to start with data engineering. Here, I'm in a notebook. And a notebook is just a collection of different cells of code that I can run independently and get interactive feedback from, with results here. It's a very popular way for developers and data scientists to set up data pipelines. We're going to start with some existing data that we already have in Azure SQL Data Warehouse. This is structured data about past reservations at our hotel. We see who made the reservation and what kind of room they paid for. And this is going to help us target different events to these different people, but it's not quite enough information. right? We still don't know much about these different potential customers. And so we've also pulled in a truly massive demographic data set from our Azure blob storage. And what this will allow us to do is segment the population into different groups of people that we can target different events to. So for example, maybe we'll have one group of people who are married with kids, and we're going to want to send them to you know, offer them a discount on a children's museum rather than sending them to a rock concert. And then maybe we have a different group of people who are single and perhaps have more disposable income to spend, and so we're probably going to want to send them an offer for like a nicer dinner rather than the children's museum discount. And because there are so many different types of people in the world, this is truly massive data. We're talking hundreds of millions of rows. But with the full power of Apache Spark on Azure Databricks, we can chew through it in just a few seconds with no problem. All right, now we've got all this information about the people, but that doesn't really matter unless we also have events to recommend them. And so we've also gone and pulled in some unstructured data into our Azure Data Lake. This is just from scraping different event provider websites from around New York, say concert venues or theaters. We get this kind of unstructured blob. But with the full power of Spark, we can quickly and easily parse this unstructured data into structured data so that we can join it with that other data and feed it back into our model. Let's go look at the model itself. I'm going to open up another notebook, and you can see that I'm still using the same set of tools and the same set of languages as my data engineer, all within the same environment. In this case, we're using Python, because that's what our data scientist likes to use. But you can also use R, SQL, and Scala on Azure Databricks. And now, I have to confess something here. I'm not really a data scientist, so I didn't build this notebook. My friend Barack, who we can see is currently viewing it, did. And he's also left us some comments 
to tell us how to run this notebook and what we're doing here. And so reading from Barack, first he says that we're going to be using Parquet to process this massive data much more quickly. We're going to start building our model. We take in here this, all of this data from this demographic data set. Then we create a pipeline uh, doing some logistic regression to determine what kind of recommendations we should make. And here he says that we should probably fit this model using cross-validation. Sounds like a good idea. So I'm just going to select all this code, uncomment it, and now I can pull in this off-the-shelf cross-validator that MLlib provides us right out of the box. We don't have to reinvent any wheels here. All of this process, which used to take maybe weeks or even months on another platform, we can now do in minutes or days on Azure Databricks. So let's see what kind of recommendations we're getting. Remember, the output of this model is a set of packages that we want to give to a particular user. So what user are we going to use to test it? Well, we came up with a user who is perhaps a male, born in the 1970s, maybe fond of wearing red shirts on stage. Uh, we've created a Scott Guthrie clone. And let's see what we recommend for Scott. We've got a red polo shirt sale at a local retailer, some dinner options. Uh, and Scott, I didn't realize that you were a hockey fan, but we've got some Canucks tickets that we think that you're going to love. You should really come stay with us. So now that we've got all this data, we know that we can have these models, we can also write it out to any of the other Azure data services that we're already using, whether that's Azure Cosmos DB or Azure SQL DB. And this way, we can serve these recommendations not only in potential emails that we send to customers, but also across all of our other web and mobile properties. But we're not done yet, because now we're just sending this model out. What we really want to know is how good is this model. We want to close that feedback loop to understand how users are responding. And in a typical system today, what you'd have to do is maybe take a batch information over the past weeks of data, process that batch, and then get a single report each week. But this means that as soon as you have that information, it's already stale. It's at least a week out of date. And that's no good. It doesn't allow us to be nimble and respond to things in real time. And so what we're going to do is go to this other notebook here, where we're going to set up a real-time streaming dashboard. And for anybody out there who's had to do this on their own, this is an extremely difficult process in most cases. There's a lot of overhead, a lot of different things to get right. But with Azure Databricks, we provide full support out for it right out of the box. And here you can see we're reading in that static data that we showed before about all of our past reservations and effortlessly joining it with an incoming stream of data that is coming in from every time that a user clicks through an email. And so what we get is a real-time output that updates as users click through, and we can see where in the United States all of these click-throughs are coming from. And of course, since we're in New York, we're seeing a lot of click-throughs from New York and New Jersey, but this is Microsoft Connect, so we're also seeing some good representation from Washington State and from California. Finally, let's say that this hadn't worked on the first try and that we would had to do some debugging. Azure Databricks provides really easy access to metadata on how this stream is performing in real time. Without having to do any extra configuration on our own, we can immediately see how quickly we're pulling in data and maybe diagnose a problem that way. But this data isn't just constrained to the Azure Databricks platform itself. Because we're working in Azure and we're fully integrated with the rest of the Azure data estate, we can write all of this information back to our Azure SQL Data Warehouse or whatever other location we want and read it in from another tool like Power BI. And so here I've had one of our business analysts go ahead and create a Power BI notebook based on that data. And we have analysis of our conversion rate and even break out our revenue by different types of event packages so we can track at a very high level how effective this pipeline is. So to recap, in the past five minutes, what we've done is we've taken a massive data set and curated it using data engineering. We've then collaboratively created a sophisticated model on top of that data using data science, and finally closed our feedback loop with a real-time streaming analytics dashboard that will tell us exactly how users are responding to these offers. All of this would have been very difficult, if not impossible, before today, but now it's easy using Azure Databricks. Thank you very much.